So today's retro recipe comes from the Chicago Daily Sun-Times, Thursday, February 24th, 1949. This recipe is for pecan cookies. So I was looking for some other recipes on here and I came across this and I thought it would be a great idea because I have family who are allergic to peanut and walnuts. But sometimes you want a nut cookie and you know what? These people always end up getting left out of the cookie game and that's not very fun. So I came across this and I thought it'd be a lot of fun. And after reading it, it reminds me of, you know, pecan sandies. And that's probably basically what it is. What I was actually looking for was um, something they use with coffee. I came across this article and here it says, be a good neighbor at coffee jamboree. Naturally, we're firm believers in the good neighbor policy. And we think one good opportunity to put it into effect is by inviting the next door neighbor in to have afternoon coffee. Come over for coffee is an invitation full of warmth and friendly hospitality, yet so easy and inexpensive to extend. Here are recipes for two delectable accompaniments for coffee. They make a real party of the coffee session. Now, one recipe is for spicy raisin biscuits. I did not make those, but if you would like me to try them out, leave a uh, comment below and I will, maybe I'll throw that together. Um, but the other recipe was for pecan cookies. All right, and they show you a little picture of all the stuff together. And underneath the little picture, it says, it's a coffee jamboree with spiced biscuits and pecan cookies to serve with the favorite beverage. And the favorite beverage is coffee. This is a really, really simple recipe and you don't need much. You need shortening, which I did use. I only had buttered flavored shortening. I don't use a lot of it. Um, so I used what I had, so we'll see how it goes. Three quarters of a cup of shortening, one and a half cups of brown sugar, firmly packed, one egg unbeaten, two cups of sifted cake flour. Now I did not have cake flour. So if you don't have cake flour, it's really, really simple to do. You take, cause one cup is 16 tablespoons. Okay. So you take 14 tablespoons of flour and two tablespoons of cornstarch, or you could just fill your cup measure up, which is much easier to all the way, take your tablespoon out, scoop out two tablespoons and then throw in your two of cornstarch. And there you go. You have cake flour. Um, let us see a half a teaspoon of all spice, which is nice because so many times spice cookies are the basic nutmeg clove, blah, blah, blah. And it's always the same thing and cinnamon. And so this is all spice. So it's going to be a little bit different. We hope a half a teaspoon of salt and eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda, um, and a half a cup of finely chopped pecans. Super, super simple recipe. You basically cream together your butter and your shortening. Then you add your dry after you've sifted them all together. You're going to put it in the refrigerator. You're going to wrap it up in wax paper or saran wrap or whatever the heck you want to do. This says to use wax paper. Fine. Put it in the fridge overnight or for several hours. And then we are going to bake them. So I actually started this. Let's get ready to get these girls in the oven. these into half inch balls. I like my cookies to be 15 to 20 grams. So let me see. That's 20. Good enough. Um, and you're supposed to bake these on an ungreased cookie sheet. But I am going to use parchment paper because I like to use parchment paper. Um, the next thing you're supposed to do is, let's see, press half of a nut on top of each ball. So <laughs> I have my bag of pecan halves. I actually get these on order from Amazon and it's a pretty good deal, but you should compare. Um, at the time I was ordering them, it was less expensive than getting them at the store when I needed them and I was making a ton of granola, so it was beneficial. 
You might want to wait for this dough to get a little more room temperature though because pressing that pecan half in it just kind of will be much easier. So I'm going to gently there, not too hard. All right, let me get these all done and we'll put them in the oven. All right, let's get these in the oven. 375 degrees for eight to 10 minutes. So after all is said and done, at 20 grams each, I ended up with three and a half dozen cookies. So yeah, if I would have made them smaller at 15 grams each, yeah, I probably would have ended up with my five, but I would like an adult sized cookie. So 20 grams is what I went with. All right, our cookies are done. We ended up with three dozen plus eight, which is pretty good. This is from the first batch that we're only in for nine minutes. So 10 really is the best way to go with these, at least for my oven, because I like them a little bit darker. And of course, this is the first, but the only reason I'm tasting it from this batch is because these are the ones that are cooled all the way. All right, I have my coffee. I got my cookie. Let's see how good these are. Oh my God, these are so good. And even though that dough is super crumbly, the, the cookie isn't, and it's not sandy. I mean, it's not cakey. I like a crunchy cookie, and there is a crunch to this, and it's probably because all the chopped pecans in it. And it's just the right amount of sweet. It doesn't have that typical fall spice cookie feel that you get with everything else because it only uses allspice. Oh, these are so good. Make these. I will definitely add these to my fall cookie repertoire, if you will. And I hope you try them and I hope you like them too.